Hi there, it's David Williams. Uh, the topic of today's video is comparators, another combinational logic circuit where, again, combinational logic is a logic circuit where the output is only dependent on the input values. Now, a comparator, the, the purpose of a comparator is really simple to understand. It takes two binary numbers of some number of bits and compares them and then output some signals to tell you if one number is bigger than the other, if they're equal to each other, or if the other number is bigger than the other. And you can see three examples of what the outputs might be. We might have a, we have a signal A greater than B, which would be equal to 1 if the input number A was greater than the input number B. We have another signal that could come out, A less than B, and we would have that if the binary input number A was less than the binary input number B, and A equals to B. Now this is a signal that would be equal to 1 if A was indeed equal to B and would be equal to 0 if A was not equal to B. So fairly simple to understand how they work. We're also going to get into a little bit of how a comparator would be designed. Now comparators are widely used, and the reason that they're widely used is they're going to be part of an ALU or arithmetic logic unit in a CPU. A very fundamental operation is to compare two numbers. And if you think about it, if you're writing software, anytime you have an if statement, you're going to be comparing two things. And a comparator is a, thing, is a part of a logic, is a logic circuit that's going to compare two numbers. So let's start off taking a look just at a block diagram as a comparator. Okay, so we've got we got this comparator here, and we've got some number A coming in and some number B coming in. And let's say each of these were four bits. So each one of these lines here represents four bits. A is a four-bit number, B is a four-bit number, and let's say these are also unsigned four-bit numbers. And coming out of the comparator then will be a signal A less than B, A greater than B, and A equal to B. Each one of these are single bits. This will be a 1 if A is less than B, otherwise it's a 0. This will be a 1 if A is greater than B, otherwise it's a 0. And this will be 1 if A is equal to B, otherwise it's a 0. So you can imagine that only one of these can ever be high at any given time. Now we're not really going to focus on, on how to design all the internals of the circuit, but let's just focus on this case of A equal to B. Now A is equal to B if all of the bits of A are the same as all of the bits of B. So how are we going how are we going to do that with a logic circuit? Well let's just take a look at at a single bit. Let's just look at um, bit n of A and bit n of B. So whatever bits you care what bit bit number they are. They're just a single bit. And what we're going to have is is uh, bit an equal to bn. So when we have two bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 are the four possible combinations that we can have. So is a, if a and, is a, when is an equal to bn? Well, it's equal to bn when they're both 0. It's not when 1 is 0, when a is 0 and b is 1. It's not when a is 1, b is 0. And it is again when a is 1 and b is 1. So hopefully you recognize that this simple two-bit truth table is the XNOR gate. There's the XOR, there's the output, and there's my AN equal to BN signal. Now we've got, in our example over here, we've got four bits. So we're going to have an A0, A1, A2, A3, and a B0, B1, B2, B3. It's pretty simple to see that if A3 and B3 are equal, and if A2, B2 are equal, and if A1 and B1 are equal, and if A0 and B0 are equal, then A is going to be equal to B. So we can take four of these exclusive NOR gates. Oops, not ends anymore. Go A3, B3, 
A2, E2, A1, E1, and A0, E0. Each one of these pairs will connect to an exclusive NOR gate. A1 to another exclusive NOR gate. B1 and then A0 and B0 to an exclusive NOR gate. And if this is one, and this is one, and this is one, and this is one, then our A equals B should be equal to one. Put all four of these into uh, four input AND gate. And then the output of that AND gate will be my A equals B signal. We do something similar for the A equals B signal and the A greater than B signal. But if you're and if you're really curious, you can look up how that's done. We're not going to focus on it today. What I want to focus on next is just this, a couple of examples of this comparator being used in in a couple of situations. Okay, so we've got our comparator here. I've got enough room. I've got my A. And I've got my B, and these are four bit numbers. And these are four bit numbers. And I've got my A greater than B signal. I've got my A less than B signal. And I've got my A equal to B signal. So, well, that A was 0001 and B was 1110. What's my output going to be? Well, let's look at the, the values. So B as a 4-bit number, that's an uh, unsigned 4-bit number. That's going to be 13, and A is a 1. So A greater than B? Well, no, it's not. Is A less than B? Yes, it is. Is A equal to B? No, it's not. Pretty straightforward. Just look at the value of the two inputs and figure out which one is greater than. I can remember doing greater than equal to comparisons in um, grade 5 or something. Now, what about we got A equal one, 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 zero, zero, 1 and B is equal to 1, zero, zero, zero. A greater than B? Yes, it is. Is A less than B? No, it's not. Is A equal to B? No, it's not. Pretty simple. What about if I wanted to make a signal? I've, got, I've only got three comparisons here, but some other comparisons I can have in a comparator are... Um, a less than or equal to B, A greater than or equal to B, I could have A doesn't equal B. So I can use my three output signals on the comparator to come up with those. For, for A less than or equal to B, well, I could have A, is it, is it less than or equal to? And, and just build into that expression is the, the gate that I'm going to need to use to create that. Right, the OR gate. A less than B or A equal to B will give me A less than or equal to B. Uh, a not equal to B. Well, again, just built into the, the words there is what I'm going to have to put in there. A not gate, an inverter. That's going to give me the signal. A does not equal to B. A does not equal B. A equals B goes to the inverter. I get A is not equal to B. And what about this last one, A greater than or equal to B? Again, built into the expression, we're going to have to use this OR gate. A greater than B or A equal to B. So this is A greater than or equal to B. And that's about it that you need to know for comparators. And hopefully everything is, is, makes sense and is straightforward. And I'll see you in the next video.